So with the new release of DaVinci Resolve 20, we got Magic Mask 2.0. So we're going to be looking at how the new Magic Mask differs from the old and a couple of different ways I've been using the Magic Mask, not just for subject isolation, but for putting graphics behind things and for grading the background as opposed to just grading the subject. Now, before I dove in and made a video like this, I wanted to spend some time just using it in real world projects, looking at the downsides and the upsides, and there are a lot of upsides. So let's dive in. So here I have a couple of shots from one of my recent short films that I shot and graded. If you want to check that out, it'll be up in the top right. Just so we're clear, I'm working in groups on the pre-clip. I've got a color space transform from color space into DaVinci White Gamut, and then out from DaVinci White Gamut into Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4 on my group post clip with a bit of a look uh, going on top as well. We're just going to be focused on the clip level today. You don't have to be in DaVinci White Gamut for this. It's just my preference, but let's go through it. So we're going to find the magic mask down in a little panel here. We'll find this little icon. If we click that, it pulls up our AI magic mask too. Now, if you do want to use the legacy version of this, maybe just for a comparison, you can click these three dots up here and choose legacy object mask, and that will switch you back to the old version. Now, the first big difference between 2.0 and the legacy version is the method in which we select an object. Magic Mask 2.0 will work with points rather than the legacy version using just a bunch of squiggly lines. You can see if we switch to the legacy one, we used to just have to draw a big line around everything. And if we go into our highlight mode here, it'll show us what it's actively selecting. And we could switch from faster to a better mode. You can see it just cleans up a couple of glitches that we had back in the faster mode. But if we reset this and we switch back to 2.0, all we have to do in this new version is create points. So I'll draw one on her face here. And you can see that's done a good job of selecting her head, but we want to select her whole body in this instance. So I'm going to put one on her arm here. See, it's selecting most of her skin now. So I say I want her clothes as well. Almost there. Another point here. And now it's pretty well selected most of it. I'm just gonna click these shoes as well. You can see it's really precise selection. So if I wanted to just select her skin, it was totally possible to do that just with those two dots. But you can see it's even still isolating her from the milkshake that she's holding. Let's include that as well. So I'm just gonna click the milkshake. Super easy. Now we're still in faster mode as well. So if we switch to better, we had a huge increase in the quality of the selection. You can see if I go back to faster mode, you can see it was just doing its best to kind of get the general outline of her face shape. But you can see it got a bit rough around near the hair and wouldn't get every little detail. See, it's missing some of her glasses there and some of the milkshake here. You can see as soon as we switch that over to better, it's now selected everything perfectly. It's even got those little stray hairs and it's using a real nice soft edge when the outline isn't quite as strong. You can see when we move over onto her knee and her arm here, it's using a nice harsh edge. You can see very clearly what is the foreground and what is the background. So it's selected her really nice. Nicely. And now all we need to do is just track this. And that's super easy. All we have to do is just come down to our tracker here and this will track this forward from this point and backwards. So if we just hit this, I'm at the start of the clip, so it should only track forward. And see if we play that back, pretty damn good selection. But what we'll notice is down in the milkshake here, there is a couple frames here where it misses parts of the milkshake. Originally got it selected pretty well, but then it glitches out as we see a, a new side of it. So what we can do is we can come to where it first starts glitching out and the same with the straw on top. So I'm actually just gonna create a new point here and a new point here. There we go. We've got both of those selections back in and you can see it's blue up until this point. So all we need to do now is just track forward again and those points will stay nice and consistent for us. And you can see that milkshake is not clipping out anymore. It's staying nice and consistent. So what do we do now that we have this selection? Well, we have two choices. We can either grade what we've selected inside this red mat, or we can grade everything but. So if we hit this little invert button down here, we are now affecting everything outside of our selection. So if we set this back to just selecting her and we turn off our mask overlay, now we make any kind of adjustment to this node, it's only going to be affecting our actress on the right here. We can make any kind of adjustment here. It can be just simple exposure adjustments. It can be color adjustments. Uh, we can even throw effects on if we wanted to do noise reduction in only certain parts of the image. But you can see it's very powerful if you had one of your actors underlit or if you just wanted to make them stand out a little bit more from a busy scene. We can do that. We can make that slight little exposure adjustment and now that's going to track with her throughout the entire scene. And it is flawless. That selection that we did was really clean. So there are no visible edges. So a really great way of reshaping the light in your scene. 
Now, I will mention that the graphics I'm using here and the graphics that I use in all of my videos are from Motion VFX. They're currently celebrating four years of DaVinci Resolve assets with a 50% off promotion. So they've put out six of their best DaVinci Resolve assets for editors. If you're into wedding filmmaking or YouTubing or anything that requires text or transitions or graphics. So it's a really good opportunity to grab some of these assets for yourself. There'll be an affiliate link down in the description so it helps support the channel as well. Now I did notice in here that there was still one frame that the milkshake clips out here. And instead of retracking the whole thing again, we also have some paintbrush tools to fill in the mask manually. So they're found down here in our brushes selection. We have our current selection mode, which is used to add a point to our mask. We can also subtract parts of our mask as well by adding points that we don't want to be included in the selection. But these two over here, you'll see are brushes. And what these will allow us to do is actually paint in or out parts of our mask manually on a frame by frame basis. So if we have one or two frames here where the milkshake is clipped out, on the far right choose our brush size and you can see we're getting a representation of that in the viewer. So I'm going to keep this relatively small and then I'm just going to go up into the viewer here and manually draw in the edge of that milkshake. So a really great way of fixing any little glitches you find over a frame or two throughout your track that isn't really worth tracking again you can just manually refine it with these paintbrush tools here. Now, what if we don't want to grade the subject? What if we want to grade everything but the subject? So here's another shot from our film, just the shot where she puts the book down, looks away to the right. But I really loved the light that we're getting through the window here. We had a light set up just outside that was giving us these nice kind of sun rays on that back wall with a little bit of shape added by the window frame there. But I wanted to accentuate that because it didn't feel it was strong enough. So what I've done in our background node here is just created a couple of power windows just to create a little bit of extra contrast on that back wall there. But as you can see, it's affecting our lead character here. When I turn that off and on, you can see those adjustments are being applied to our face, which isn't what we want. I just want to be working on the background as a separate adjustment. So the magic mask was a super helpful way of doing that. Now we could apply the magic mask on this node in particular, but I didn't want things to get too complicated as we've already got power windows on here. So another method of utilizing a magic mask is by creating a node before this one. I'm just going to do that with shift S or right click, add node, add serial before. Creating a node just beforehand where we'll do the magic mask selections, transferring the alpha channel from this node into our background node. So any changes being made in this node will only happen to the mask we set in the node prior. So let's see what that looks like. Let's jump into our magic mask tab again. Straight away, I'm going to turn on our overlay and I'm going to switch our mode into better. And I'm just going to start by placing a first dot, see what it selects. Pretty good. Let's just go one more here. Boom. Only two clicks and we've got a perfect selection of our actress here. And I'm going to hit forward and backward. Now you can see it's even doing a great job on keeping her selected with that whip pen. That was perfect. But you'll see when she raises the book up, it doesn't recognize it. It hasn't seen it before. It doesn't know if it's part of our selection or not. So all we have to do is come down to the first frame if we just go forward and then backwards up until we can see that book jumping out of our selection what we have to do is add a point on that book it's selected it now then we just have to track back this last little bit of red on our clip here so with the track back button and now you can see it's kept our book in the selection now so let's turn our mask overlay off something doesn't feel right here if we turn off our background on and off you can see it's only affecting inside of that mask so we're going to invert our mask turn off our overlay and look at that. Those power windows are now only affecting the background and leaving her untouched in the foreground. And it is super clean even when she raises that book up. There's no weird artifacting on the edges. It can create some really nice masks. So that's a super handy way of changing the backgrounds of your scenes if you wanted to say modify the, the lighting of a scene without changing the lighting of your subject. Really handy way of separating the two. Now you might be thinking, why not use the depth map for that? That's literally what it was designed to do. However, if I turn this off, drag that onto our node, we're going to turn on invert. So I'm going to turn on adjust map levels. I'm going to select our far limit and our near limit. We're just going to pull that back. So we are just selecting the background here. So we're just selecting the background here. And we're going to come down to map finesse and turn on post processing just to get a bit of those cleaner edges. But regardless, you'll see. Even as we move on to things like the whip pan here, you can see it starts to fall apart pretty quick when we get some crazy movement in our scene that the magic mask handled really well. Even if we go back to when she raises the book here, you can see we get a lot of chatter around the motion here. It's not quite sure where that depth is sitting. It's doing a really good job. 
I just find in certain scenarios, the magic mask just does a better one. One will work better than the other in certain scenarios. So it is worth testing out each method. For this one, the magic mask just did a really good job of working with that selection when the book was being raised and sticking with her when we whip pan away. So the third way of using the magic mask is really a cheap and easy rotoscoping method to allow us to place graphics or other visual elements behind certain people or objects in the scene. Now we can't do this entirely in the color page. Don't worry, we're not jumping over to the fusion page. We're actually going to go back to the edit page. So I'm going to come to this shot here and let's pretend what I want to do with this one is add some text or some motion graphics behind our character here. So in order to place a graphic behind the foreground and in front of the background, we need a foreground and a background. So I'm actually going to duplicate this clip. I'm going to hold alt, move it up to layers. Then I'm just going to grab a title and drag it in between these two. Now you won't see anything at first, but if we turn this top layer off, you can see our title is now sitting above our footage. I'm just going to come in here and make it a little bit bigger so we can see it poking out on either side here. But getting back to our magic mask, now that we've got our text in place, we'll turn back this top layer on, and this is going to act as our foreground. Let's jump back into the color page. I'm going to go to our very last node here. We're going to enter the magic mask tab, and I'm just going to put a dot on our subject here, turn on our overlay. See, it's done a great job selecting a face already. I just want to let it know that we want the full thing. We want the hair and the sunglasses as well. That's perfect. Let's grab the metal at the bottom here as well. Now it's done a pretty good job already, but we can turn this into our better quality. And you see that really tidies it up, especially with getting really soft around those stray hairs as well. So we don't have any harsh edges visible. But that looks like it's done a great job. We're just going to hit track forward and backwards. Very minimal movement in this shot. So that was a pretty easy track. But now how do we remove the background from this clip so that we can reveal the text underneath? Well, that's actually by using an overall alpha channel on our clip, which we can do by right clicking and selecting add alpha output. So now we can take our alpha channel here from our node and plug that into the alpha output. And as soon as we do that, we now have our actress over the top of our text. We can see it's done a really clean job of keeping things nice and soft where our hair gets a little frizzy on the right hand side. If we go back to the edit page and we move this text around, you can see it's moving perfectly behind her head. Now we just want to throw one quick bonus tip in here. And that is, you'll see if we do anything to this image now, if we move it left or right, straight away, we lose our track, go back into our mask overlay. You can see now our image has shifted, but our magic mask has totally gone out of whack. We'll need to basically reset the magic mask and totally track it all again, which is a bit of a pain if you want to move subjects around after you've made the mask and composited your text. Now, an easy way of doing that is by actually hopping into Fusion. Now, don't run away. It's not scary Fusion. It's just going to be one node in here. So I'm going to make sure our clip's selected. We're going to head over into Fusion. Now, I don't mess around with Fusion much either. It does scare me a little bit, but I'm just going to press Shift Space while our Media in one is selected. I'm going to search for the magic mask and we're going to add it. It's going to add it right in between our in and our out. Now we have all of our familiar Magic Mask tools over on the right here. Now this is using the legacy version of the Magic Mask with the strokes. So we're just going to have to create a few lines in here, just making sure we're drawing over everything that we want selected. And you can see that does a pretty good job straight out of the gate. We're going to switch to our better mode and we're just going to give that a track forward and backwards. Now the benefit of doing this is that any adjustments we make to a clip in the Fusion page actually happen before the color page processes it. So basically this magic mask adjustment will stay the same regardless of what we do to the clip in the edit or the color page. So now that it's fully tracked, you can see that's done a pretty good job, nice and steady. We can go back to the edit page and you can see we now have our mask that we can move around and it's not going to freak out or lose our tracking. It's just going to stay in place regardless of what we do to our footage. So there is Magic Mask 2.0, super handy tool to have in your grading toolkit. It makes a huge difference being able to grade subjects independently from their background. And I've used it so many times in my professional grading practice. It's really become the go-to for me for grading individual subjects or people within a shot. And the results are always really clean and really consistent. If you have any questions about the Magic Mask 2.0, or if you want to see another video on one of the tools in Resolve 20, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, that's it from me. Hope you have a good day and catch you in the next one.